All right. Hello there, the internet. It is the last podcast of the NASCAR season. But but before we even get into anything else, I just want to say, stay tuned till the end of the podcast because Chris put together a beautiful little recap video. And I have decided as of three minutes ago that I'm putting it up at the end of this um, podcast. And so I might upload it as a separate video too. Yeah, breaking news. (laughs) You're good. (laughs) I'm having a beautiful moment and you're screaming breaking news. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in my inner news reporter. There you go. You're doing a wonderful job. But um, yeah, yeah. I might upload it as a separate clip too, just as its own thing. But I'm also going to put it up at the end (coughs) of this podcast too, just, just for shits and giggles. Um, because I feel like it fits at the end of the championship Phoenix podcast. And so now, now, now that we got that, now, now that we got that out of the way, there it is. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's Phoenix time. It's so yeah, Phoenix. let's just let's talk about Phoenix and the championship weekend because we actually got to cover it. We were there yeah. in person. That was a lot of fun. Uh, besides, I mean, Friday I was tired as hell, but that was a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Um, it, I was probably like one of my first ARCA races that I actually went to. Um, I've never really gone to. I never really like watched an ARCA race in person. Um, I don't know because there's really not that many opportunities. Actually, no, I take it back. Um, the bull rink. The bull. I was gonna say, weren't you at the the dirt the race bull ring shit show a couple years ago? The bull ring and then the dirt race. Um, yeah, I was at that. So, um, I mean, not the bull ring. I was at the uh, the only arc race I've seen in person is the the shit show at the dirt track that we don't like to talk that we don't talk about. <laughs> Nobody talks about. It. <laughs> Nobody um, talks about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I take it back. So I did go to an arc race at Vegas in the dirt, the dirt race, um, but besides that, that was probably the only time I went to an arc race besides the championship race too. But um, a lot of fun. It was pretty entertaining. Um, yeah. Just there to see, like, the whole... We, I mean, we've been there before. We were, <coughs> excuse me. We were there last year for um, Xfinity and, and the uh, Cup Series. Um, but just to kind of see it all, like, put together, like, from not just, like, the fan perspective, but, like, the, the media perspective is just pretty cool. Um, yeah. Just seeing how... Everything, I guess, as far as championship weekend is done, like how much organization goes into it, um, and just everything, like it just it's it's really neat. There's all like the the work that goes into it, not just for like um, you know making sure you know everything starts on time, but like you know what they're doing setup for like you know the the stages, like you know all the the pyrotechnic stuff, all the sound effects and stuff like that. It's just pretty neat. Um, just seeing all that kind of come together. So, um, and not only that, but like, I mean, for me, it was just kind of cool. Like, I mean, I've seen some photographers that I've been following for, for a little bit in person, like at Vegas, um, not Vegas too, but like Kansas, um, Dega and then Vegas in the fall. So seeing that, them there again was kind of cool. <clears throat> um, just to kind of, you know, just people that I kind of like that, you know, I kind of look up to that kind of motivate me to, you know, do this whole photography thing. So, um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool to, to see that, you know, cause I mean, they don't realize it. They just think of you know, I'm just another photographer that's there to just take pictures, but you know, like, look well, at this dipshit. Over here <laughs> with this camera. Look at this dork <laughs> over here in this blue vest. <laughs> Fucking dweeb. Dweeb. <laughs> um, but it's just like, you know, they don't realize that, you know, they're, they're kind of one of the reasons why, like, I'm, I'm motivated to, to do what, what I do, you know, just kind of go out there and try to make a name for myself. I mean, not, not just me, but both of us at the same time, kind of like what we're yeah. doing right now. Um, so it's just, it, it, overall, it's just a really cool weekend. And then, like, honestly, like I just had a, a really amazing time just kind of, you know, like the whole vibe is just amazing. I mean, you can you know you you you've seen it too. Like you know, just the whole media center, just being in that room, and you know, just all of us just like <laughs> laughing, like cracking jokes. Yeah. It's just like it. You didn't it you didn't get that really at Vegas. Like at Vegas, you didn't really get that that much. Like when we were there, I was just like, oh man, we're not like gonna sardine camp. But you know, it's just like 
we made it the most of it and like they just cracked jokes we're just laughing just you know it was a it was a fun time like it didn't make it i mean i was having fun regardless but that just put icing on the cake because like you know you're just there to to have have a good time you know you're you're doing something that that you know you you love to do and um it's just it's just not only you but it's like other people that love to do this and it's just like it's crazy to see how how passionate they are for the sport and what they do and yeah it's just it's just pretty incredible yeah i was gonna say it like the um i think maybe it's also because we were more comfortable because <clears throat> in in vegas they were the some of the same people that were in phoenix were also at vegas but i think it's also because it's like we're just shy we are shy human beings yeah. in person um, I've gotten a lot better with it. I, I've actually, I've watched you progress through the season as well, just doing the podcasts and the videos and everything. It's like, you're a hell of a lot shyer than I am, but I've gotten to watch you grow and open up a little bit more and just be your little goofy self. And I feel like by the time Phoenix came around, not, we were both just way more comfortable with just talking to people. Cause it's like, we're just, like I said, we're, we're just, we're timid and we're shy. And so it takes us a minute to even open up. And I feel like by Phoenix, we were... We were more comfortable. We were more open. I was actually talking to a lot more photographers and people at the track, and it just, it, the whole vibe was just great. And so I feel like next season, if this season was already good, I can't um, wait for next, next season. season's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, it's gonna be a fantastic season because, like you were saying, it's like when, once we're comfortable and like people start and people started recognizing us. It's like I don't remember her name. I am terrible with names, so I apologize. She's not watching this anyway because I don't think she knows <laughs> the channel exists. But. Yeah. I mean, I um, think I ran into one... her a couple of times. Like, I might have seen her, but I wasn't. Yeah. I was just kind of like, you know, I think she was doing her thing and I was doing my thing. But um, yeah, I mean, we were all kind of I... doing our thing. But like, <clears throat> um, she she's recognized me through years of doing Las Vegas and I actually talked to her for like the first time today. So it's like she's been shooting for a long time. I've been doing Vegas since 2018. And I, th I don't remember exactly what she said to me, but like the way I'm remembering the conversation, because I think you were already in the media center at this point. So I was just walking back with her in some reporter from um a local newspaper in arizona and i was talking to her about some stuff and i was telling her that hey we just kind of broke out this season you know we're doing all this stuff and she was like yeah i've recognized you from doing vegas she's like i remember seeing you wherever you're at vegas and then i saw you at kansas and i was like what's this guy doing here it's <laughs> <I was> like <laughs> just thought that was funny that she actually recognized me and then some of the other photographers i talked to like the guy up in turn two who was just kind of chilling on his little camera box <coughs> And shooting from turn two, that guy, he was a funny guy. I actually really liked him. He was really nice, too. Yeah. And he was telling me about how he was shooting Martinsville when Ross Chastain did the <laughs> did the wall move. ride. Yeah, so we were talking about that under caution. It's just, like, just being a little bit less shy, being more open and talking to people. It's, like, the media center, just the vibe of the NASCAR garage in general. It's, like, there's just, like, we're all serious people. It's, like, we're all there to do a job, put our heads down, but, like, when we're really not on the clock and we're just kind of chilling and waiting for things to happen, it's a really fun group of people. And I think it's really funny. Like we all have that little switch because I was telling Sterling earlier today, it's like, it's weird that we have that switch in our brain where it's like the caution's out. There's not too much happening. So we're just kind of chilling in the corners, um, figuring out where we're going to go next, just talking, laughing, just having a good time. And then the green flag waves and all of us are like, all right, now it's go time. Yeah. <laughs> now we, now we got to put our serious faces on. Yeah, and that's just how it is. Like you're just like like you said, like during the yellow, you're just like, all right, like well, I got some time to chill, and then you just kind of go about your day. And then once, like what, like you said, once the green flag drops, you're just like, all right, it's game time. Yeah, and it's like that before and after the race too. It's like pre race and post race. The the whole photo room that we were in was just we were just having a time, just you know, just making jokes, talking to each other, telling stories through the season just having a really good time and then you know the race started and everybody just kind of scattered like chickens to go, <laughs> go do what their they thing. to do yeah to go do their thing and then we all reconvened at the end of the race and you know did the same thing it's like nothing had ever happened so it was overall great weekend great year and so i feel like next season with us being a lot less shy there's hopefully going to be a lot more content rolling out next year <laughs> too and it's going to be a wonderful year yeah can't wait for next year um yeah, because, like, I mean, I've seen you progress, too. It's, like, I mean, you've d been doing it for, for quite a while. And, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I feel like, like, you know, us breaking out of our shells, it's, like, you know, I I'll be honest. It's, like, you know, when, <clears throat> like, if you would have told me, like, in March that I had to go up to a driver and ask for a picture, it's just, like, ugh. 
Like, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable doing that. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, because you're still kind of like starstruck. You know what I mean? It's not just like a regular person where you're just like, oh, can I take your picture? You're still kind of, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, during the March race, like, when I saw, like, no, like uh, Noah Gregson or, like, Kyle Busch, I'm just like, holy fuck. Like, he's right there. I have always yeah. met them and, like, had autograph sessions with them. But at the same time, it's just like, oh, my God. Like, he's right there. Like, I got to be cool. Yeah. I can't be, like, oh you know, like, freaking out or anything like that. Chris is over there and he's weak, arms heavy. <laughs> Mom's spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, because that was your first race. That was the first time you've covered a race. Yeah. And, and like, so I was like, I've been doing it since 2018, so at that point, it's like, it's, I don't really get starstruck, so I'm just like, oh, here they are. Like, here comes this person, here comes <clears> that person. They don't know of my existence. They, just, I mean, they know I exist because they see me, obviously, but, like, um, but it's like for me, I'm just like, oh, it's these drivers. I've worked with them. I've been around them before. Yeah. Um, and so it's like you being at your first race. You were kind of like me when I did my first race. I was like, oh my god, it's this person. Oh my god, it's that person. I think at one point, I think we made the joke at one point where we saw Vince Welsh and Bob Pockrass, and we sat down in the car after the race, and you were like, oh my god, they're real. And so we made the joke. It's like, wait, they're not CGI characters made up <laughs> for entertainment. <laughs> they're not CGI. It's all real. <laughs> they're real people I could <laughs> no it's just it's funny sweet. it's like it's it's funny like like you said like when it's your first race you're just like oh my god it's it they're actually real it's a real person that I see on yeah. tv yeah you're used to seeing them on tv all the time so seeing them in like <laughs> person it's funny yeah it's just uh yeah it was crazy um and then like a lot of times like you're just like <clears throat> like when I'd done uh what do you call it um like photography like of actual drivers like that was like a little bit like nerve wrecking for me too because it's like i've seen some of these photographers and they literally like get up close and personal with them like they're literally like right next to them taking pictures well you kind of have to and, sometimes yeah you, it's your job You're like you have to but like i'm not gonna lie there are some times where like i'll be taking pictures and like i'll see a driver like look at me i'm just like oh shit i'm gonna walk away like <laughs> <laughs> like i would just get like intimidated like you know what i mean like it was it's very intimidating especially like harvick because like i took a picture of harvick at vegas and like it was funny because he was just like laughing with his crew and then all of a sudden he saw me and then just looked serious and just like i could i think i think he was just like trying to like have like his game face ready like for his for the picture but like yeah. to me i'm just like oh my god he's like staring at me he's like why is he taking a he's picture gonna of me? kill me <laughs> he's gonna come at me he's gonna <laughs> climb over this car and knock the camera out of my hand he's gonna wring my neck <laughs> like Greg Biffle I because I noticed <laughs> I'm ready for that one okay um because what I noticed in Phoenix which I thought was really funny and I never thought about it until Phoenix and it's funny that you bring that up now with the Harvick thing because um I feel like a lot of these drivers are like, <coughs> they'll pretend to act nonchalant when the camera's around, like, they don't, like, they're pretending just to ignore you, but they're 100% half the time they're posing for the camera because they see you coming. Oh, yeah. Because the amount of times the driver is just, like, kind of slouching by the car, playing on their phone, then you, they see you raise the camera, and they, like, straighten up their back, they put the phone down, they stare off into the distance, like, they're getting a hero shot. It's my favorite thing. Like, I think there were, like, six drivers that were just chilling until they saw me raise the camera, then they immediately went into, like, hero shot position. But just, there, like, was so, there was some... There was... Yeah, there's some that do, but then there's some that don't. They're just like, ah, whatever. Like, I'm just gonna be on my phone. Well, I think some of them just didn't see us, because I, there were some times where there were so many cameras and just things going on that it's like, you, you just don't know who's taking your picture, but... The drivers that physically saw me come come up and raise the camera, they immediately hopped into like hero pose to like, this is my hero shot. I need to get a good photo. Yeah. I need to look good. So it's like some of them I took from really far away. And so like I have a picture of Sam Mayer playing on his phone. Uh, he never saw me because I was probably like 100 feet away, like three cars down when I took that photo. And so there was no way he would have saw me. But then there were drivers like Almondinger and Hemrick that I have photos of them where they, obvi they very obviously saw me come up and raise the camera. And they, it was painfully obvious to me that they were getting ready to do their hero pose and then the second the camera went down they went back to doing what they were doing <laughs> they're like all right go, time to go back on my phone yep <laughs> yeah it's funny how like you <laughs> they, they do that because it's just like they're they're ready they're just like all right take a pic real quick all right back on my phone yep <laughs> it's great it's funny and uh and eric recognized us from talladega too like he recognized me from vegas and then we went to Talladega, because in Talladega, he said he recognized me, and he just couldn't remember where. And then when we saw him in Phoenix, he was like, oh my god, you guys are at Talladega. And I was like, yeah, we were. So I was like, he's, Eric Estep recognized me, which f makes me feel nice and bubbly. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> what I was doing. I think I was taking pictures of other cars, but. 
You might have been. Yeah, I, I saw him. I was like, I'm going to go say hi to Eric. Like, I feel like I had to. Since I, I told him, I was like, I'm going to say, oh, my God, I still need to edit the pictures of the car. I have the pictures of the car I took. I'm going to edit those and post them. So I told him I would take pictures of the groovy car and then post them and tag him in it. So I, I still need to do that. I'll probably do that when we're done shooting this. But yeah. Eric, they're coming. I'm sorry. <laughs> they're coming, Eric. They're coming, Eric. I'm almost done. They're on my phone. They're just not edited yet. <laughs> yeah. But now let's talk about the racing really fast. Um, unless you, you wanna, got something else you want to talk about. No. Do you want to talk about no? Arca or do you want to? <coughs> I, I don't know if there's much Arca? to talk about with Arca just because it's like I, the only Arca race I really watched this year was Daytona. And I think I caught parts of Talladega. But um, I don't really watch Arca. I don't know who those drivers are. All I know is that. Sammy Smith just kicked everyone's ass and that Jake Drew won the championship. Like, that's all I know about the ARCA drivers because I just don't follow ARCA like I should. Yeah. No, he dominated that whole race. It's just complete, complete dominance. Oh, yeah. He's fucking, he sucked down a can of whoop ass before he got in the car. Yeah. Dude just, like, woke up and said, I'm winning. All I do is win, win, win. No matter what. what. Is that since Sammy Smith won a couple races this year? Yeah. He's won quite a few. Yeah, he's he's good. Um, he is good. Because then he gets in the Xfinity car, and, and he's done really well in the Xfinity car. It's funny, it's a KBM car. truck, too. Or, car. Sorry. Car? Oh, damn. I didn't know that. I didn't realize that was a KBM car. Yeah. I thought it was Joe Gibbs. Did Joe Gibbs sell it to KBM? Uh, I think KBM started their own Arca series. Arca's team. Oh, well, what happened to... I think Joe Gibbs is Because still I know... Around. In Arca? I think. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't think so. I think that... You know what? I think after Ty Gibbs left, I think they sold it to Kyle Busch. Uh, I mean, maybe. That might have been... I don't know. Like I said, I don't know because I don't follow Arca, but that's... I That sounds vaguely familiar. I feel like I remember reading something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't I don't have too much to touch on. The the only bad thing about covering these races is that you don't really get to watch them, and so you don't really know what's actually going on in the race until you get to the media center or you get on Twitter, or you just watch the race afterwards. And so like, I thought the truck race wasn't that bad. No, uh, the truck race is pretty good. I feel like it was pretty good. It was really close at the end because I think what made the truck race really exciting for us is that we had dinner on the line because yeah. we had the battle of the Smiths, and it really came <coughs> down to both Smiths. So <laughs> it did come down to both Smiths. Um, I don't think Ben, ben Rhodes, he stood out, but it, his strategy didn't really work well. I honestly thought at the end there that Ben Rhodes was going to get it. Uh, I got nervous. Yeah, I actually. Like, yeah. Because he was really close. I was like, this dude's going to run away with the championship just by staying out. Yeah, he stayed out. Didn't work. Zane Smith caught him, got back around him. Because I think Ben took two tires and Zane took four I think that's what really made the difference was the tires at the end there. He just Rhodes just couldn't hang on to it, and Zane Smith was able to get by everybody, yeah, and win the race in the championship. Yeah. Um, it's pretty really exciting race though, from what I was seeing. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. I liked it. Um, it was, it was pretty, pretty entertaining. Um, as far as like, just the whole race, but um, yeah, it was pretty good. I like the oh, whole story. They about knocked the wall down in front of me, too. Oh, yeah, who did? The, the, <laughs> I don't remember who it was at this point, but they remember when they... were you, you? I think you were with me when they they crashed right in front of me and they hit the wall right where I was sitting. When? On the outside wall? Yeah, that was at the truck race. In, in turn two, when they spun out right in front of us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how, did you, how did you forget? Chris, I almost died and you would have forgotten me. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, what, <laughs> what happened to Michael again? Yeah, he was like, "Weren't you? It was like, weren't you standing there?" Because I, I know we were together it. most of the truck race. <laughs> I, Here's the thing: I saw Raja go sideways towards me. I'm like, "Yeah, no, I'm getting out of the way." Oh, was it Raja who spun? I can't even remember who spun. Yeah, was that who hit the was, wall in front of us? Okay, it was Raja. I, I I was taking pictures, and all of a sudden, I just saw a car go sideways towards me. I'm like, "Uh, I'm getting out of the yeah, way." Yeah. So, so here's what happened: I was taking photos <laughs> through the fence. And just the way it was dark. And here's here's the funny thing about some of those crashes that I don't think a lot of people realize. That you don't always hear them happening. Like, you don't hear the tire screech. No. Because what happens is, if they're spinning backwards, <coughs> they're just in the gas. 
And if they're in the gas, that tire is always rotating because they're trying to get the backwards momentum down, try to get the forward momentum rolling to try to not hit the wall or at least not hit the wall that hard. And so if the tires aren't locked up and they're always spinning, you don't hear the screech because the screeching only comes when they lock up the tires and it's sliding across the asphalt. And so when the contact was made and everybody started spinning, I was shooting pictures down more toward the bottom of the track and they wrecked going toward the top. And so they were out of my frame. Like they were out of my camera frame. So I didn't even know they were spinning oh. until I until I watched them crash into my camera view. And at that point, they had already hit the wall in front of me. And when, the second I saw the truck come into my camera view, I was like, oh, shit. And I ducked down behind the wall. And I guess the photographer next to me had the same thing happen to him because we both kind of went down at the same time to try to avoid anything that came through the fence. Thankfully, nothing came through the fence. Like, I, there wasn't any debris that came through and hit us. Like, everybody was okay. None of the camera equipment was damaged. But, like, it was one of those things where you didn't hear the crash happening. And because of the angle I was shooting at, I didn't realize they were crashing until they slid through my camera frame. Yeah. And I, so that's why I had such a late reaction to it. Yeah, I remember that now. Like, I think... Uh, it's also why you sign a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> you sign a waiver so you don't get sued. Yeah, no, I signed the waiver. I know what I was signing up for. So we all know. Yeah, I know that, that, that there's a chance of that happening. But thankfully, NASCAR, um, they do everything they can to build everything safe. And so we had about four feet of wall in between us along with the catch fence. Yeah. And, and you know, the wall is tall enough that the chance of something actually coming over the wall into the fence is pretty low. And so, yeah, like I said, nothing came through the fence. Uh, we weren't really in any immediate danger. It was just more of the shock of, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you just hit the wall in front of us. Yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, I remember that because that was like a... I, I think you guys were like in that open area for the, for the photographer hole. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go down further towards like the... Uh, middle of turn turned uh one and two so i got my spot <clears throat> and i think on the restart i saw them coming so i started taking pictures actually i want to go back and see i don't know if i ac actually have pictures of it but um um sorry brain fart I, I like that going through my photos you can see where i panicked because it's like clean shot clean shot clean shot then you see the blurry. nose of a truck come into frame and then everything just gets blurry <laughs> <laughs> It's like there's there's two pictures. There's I think it's like a three picture story where it's like no, it's four pictures where you see everything's nice and clean where I'm shooting toward the bottom. And then the next picture you can just see the nose of the truck sliding like obviously pointed the wrong way. And then you see like the driver's the not the driver's door. Then you see like the passenger door and then just the tail end and smoke. And that's when I then that was pretty much when I reacted and kind of ducked down. So that was the last picture I got. So it, it was a fairly late reaction, but it was it was but everything happened so fast. Yeah, it did. Like, it, it happened in, like, what, two or three seconds? And it's like, like I said, you don't hear the tires screeching, and it's already loud because of everyone driving by. So I didn't know they were crashing until they slid through my camera, and I was like, oh, fuck, that's right here. <laughs> yeah. I think I was having issues with my camera because, like, it kept focusing on the, on the fence. So I'm like, God damn it. I was like, I was trying to fix it. And then, like, <laughs> I think I looked up, and I saw Raja get sideways i'm like oh fuck i'm like he's coming towards me <laughs> so then i like ducked i got my camera ducked and then i looked over to you guys and i think you're still taking <laughs> pictures <laughs> i think you eventually saw you're just like oh shit <laughs> yeah no he and i were both doing the same thing like we were the two poor bastards who didn't realize they were crashing because i don't the guy next to me like we both had the like the same reaction time of whoops here they are crashing through our camera frame <laughs> i was like michael <laughs> if you yelled my name, I didn't hear shit. <laughs> shout out to but yeah. Shout out to those uh, noise-proof uh, headsets you have. Yeah, no, for real. They they do a great job at not letting me go deaf. But also shout out to NASCAR in the uh, fucking five feet of wall they have between us and the racetrack. Yeah. <sighs> but that was that was probably the most eventful part of my of my Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was also. You, <coughs> sorry, go ahead. No, you're good. Um, the, also on top of Friday, I was also tired as hell because I had only gotten like four hours of sleep because I closed the night before. So I closed Thursday Thursday night at my job, and so I don't think I went to bed until close to midnight to then get up at three in the morning to get ready because we left around four, and so at that point I had been running all day off of like three hours of sleep, and so I was already tired. That woke me up. Not gonna lie, <laughs> having 
having Raja just bap the wall, like, literally three feet in front of me was enough to be like, all right, I'm awake now for the rest of the race. Uh, <laughs> Raja said, all right, here's your daily dose of caffeine. Yeah, he saw me. He was like, this guy's dozing off. He needs a wake-up call and decided to knock down the wall in front of me. And I was like, you know what? Thanks, Raja. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Thanks, Raja. Yep. And then I slept like a baby the night. I slept real well. Knowing that I almost died. <laughs> I slept like a baby knowing I almost died. No, nope, that's why NASCAR makes you sign a waiver. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we were okay. Yeah, we're fine. And then going into Xfinity now, um, unless you have anything else on track. <clears throat> uh, no, not really. I think that's pretty much Oh, legit. wait! I have one thing on track. Oh. I have another thing. The fucking cane. The, I understand what they were going for with the way they set up the championship podiums and stuff. Like the, For those of you who don't <clears throat> know who weren't in, in Phoenix or watching or all that, the, the way they had it set up was they had the championship stage in the crescent, and then there was like, what, what like 100 feet of space between the victory lane and then the photographer camera riser thing? Yeah. That was like, what, 100, 200 feet, something like that. Um, and so we were behind everybody. It was essentially like the championship stage is parked on the pit wall, and the camera riser for the media was probably about just like i don't know like 30 feet away from the wall that separates the racetrack and the crescent so like we were really we were pretty far back there was a good amount of space between us and so all the fans filled the space between us yeah on top of that they also had like a crane camera to shoot like the championship celebration which i understand why they had it set up the way they had it set up but at the same time it's like i we learned real quick on Friday night that the left side of the photo riser was not a good spot to shoot from because when the, sh when the celebration happened, they like swooped the crane camera in the middle of everyone's shot. Yeah. And so I have, I have championship photos from Friday where, um, there's just a fucking NBC crane camera just in the middle of the <laughs> frame because of where they swooped the camera through. And I was like, God damn it. And, <laughs> yeah. and that's my thing. I, I, I get it. But like, but I feel like it just ruins the shot. Cause Oh, it 100% ruins the shot. It's just, like... I mean, even, like, during, like, the post-celebrations when they're doing the burnouts, it's like you can't get a good shot of the car because the cameraman's, like, running on the track trying to get, a, like, a good shot. But it's, like, it ruins it for everybody else because you're getting that cameraman in the way. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's, like, during the burnouts, I'm just, like... I again from a production... From a TV production standpoint, I understand why they have that cameraman out there but as a photographer covering that event it's so annoying when i'm trying to shoot the burnout and there's just this dude in a bright ass fucking traffic cone vest running in front of my shot and i'm just like guy move <laughs> like, and like, just, what's... like i have so many burnout photos with a fucking nbc camera guy in front of it i'm just like and i have a lot of good photos too where it's just like you can see the car and everything but then there's a camera guy in front of it i'm just like you're literally blocking my shot yeah <laughs> There's no reason for you to be out there. Like, <laughs> nobody wants I to see you. I get it, in the but it's annoying. I'm just like, bruh. Nobody wants to see you in the photos. I know. I just like the amount of celebration photos that he's ruined. I'm just like, bleh. So it's like, I try to shoot away from him. Like, I try to get him really early when he's still running out there because then I can get my clean shots. And then I try to, like, when he runs away from the car, I try to get those shots in too. But there's so many celebration shots where it's just a dude in a vest i'm just like uh, ruined this is this is supposed to be for the team this isn't for you like you're not the star of the show get, get lost <laughs> go away go away it's like i know you're doing your job but go away <laughs> it's just and then like saturday the <clears throat> the guy almost got hit by a car like i think by ty oh, gibbs he did he, he literally he I, got I, hit have, by ty. I have video of it and it's just like <clears throat> when I go back and watch it, I'm like, the dude's like literally like a foot away from getting knocked out. See, that's the other thing. It's like, I. <clears throat> my other fear is that because a lot of these, some of these burnouts are really thick. Like, you can't see shit through the smoke. Yeah. So it's like, one of my fears is that there's going to be a day where there's a, a driver doing a burnout, whether it be the. It doesn't matter what series it is, but there's going to be a driver doing a burnout at some point. And this cameraman's gonna just take the wrong step, or he's just gonna be in the wrong spot, and that car's gonna come out of the smoke and just obliterate him. Yeah. And that's what I'm terrified of. It's just like, cause we got, we've gotten close a few times this year, I feel like. Yeah. And like, and I feel like the Ty Gibbs celebration was the closest. I'm just like, I can't, 
Like, even, even if the cameraman doesn't get hit, there's a chance that even just the camera itself gets obliterated, which is another thing. It's like, if, even if the cameraman himself doesn't get hit, there's also a chance that if that rear end comes flying out of the smoke and just smashes the NBC camera, because it's like... That's your guys' It's fault. like, not only... Yeah, not only is it a huge inconvenience for the photographers on, on the pit lane, it's also a huge safety risk to have that guy just run out there with essentially no safety gear. He's just out there... He's, like, in, in cargo shorts and his t-shirt yeah <laughs> like, and cargo pants and a t-shirt with this big ass fucking million dollar camera and like he almost got hit saturday night i'm just i can't even imagine what that's what's gonna happen if a driver just decks one of those well, not like that but like all of us standing there and i think about if you got the, if the camera got hit and that fucking camera goes flying towards us well here's the thing we're not close enough to get hit by the camera like it's it's gonna shatter that camera into a million pieces i'm i don't care or, about the camera this or point. even like, worse if the cameraman like gets hit the cameraman's gonna get the camera fl- flown at, at us like <laughs> i mean i hate to say it but just like you know just it's 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 scary because like think about it, like like think if you're just sitting right there and all of a sudden he, he gets hit and then the guy gets flown at you like uh, i mean that's that's i don't know I feel like it's it was. I feel like the, the, <laughs> the burnout cameraman is one of those things that it's like, it's it's a good idea on paper, but it just it ruins too many shots for photographers. And I feel like Saturday <clears throat> really raises the potential of hey, there's a chance this guy does get hit, and I really don't want that to happen. I feel like didn't they start with the drone? Why don't we just bring the drone yeah. back? What's funny is that Why they don't... they brought the drone during COVID. I'm like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Because a drone, like, you yeah. can actually maneuver a lot. Like, you can kind of, you know, work your way around and get d- c- uh, certain spots. But, like, a cameraman, he's literally, like, running in- at the car while it's-, it's spinning around. And the thing is, you don't have a ton of control during those burnouts either. It's like, you're just kind of mashing the gas and the brake and just kind of doing your thing. It's like, it- that car is going to slide around kind of where it wants to slide around. And so, you don't you don't have a ton of control. And if you don't see them out, out of the smoke... It's gonna be a whole thing. So, which is why I like I like the drone because a the drone, while it might be mildly annoying to have fast. a drone in my camera shot, it moves fast. And so it's like, even from like a cameraman perspective, just for me being a photographer on the other side of pit wall, um, it might be annoying to have a little drone in the shot. But it doesn't. It won't ruin the photo like a whole ass man in a bright vest does. And on top of that, having a drone, God forbid the drone does get hit, all all, it, all we just lost equipment. Like that's it. We're just gonna smash a drone. We're not gonna smash up a human being. Which I I will take smashing a drone over a human being any day of the week. Exactly. So. I'd rather lose a a drone than a cameraman. Yeah. <laughs> because that's wolf. You know he that got way too close to comfort on Saturday. Like he, I saw I watched it happening and I was like, please for the love of God. Well, not only that, but like <laughs> the, the camera that they carry are like huge. It's not like you know just like a small camera like ours. Like they can just you know put it on like a on a stabilizer. And oh, just you know, call it's it a whole thing. rig. It's a whole. Thing. Yeah, it's a whole ass camera. It's like it's it's huge. It's like a SP- camera and a rig because it's a TV camera attached to a stabilizing rig, so it doesn't shake a lot when he's running. So it's like. Those things are heavy as fuck. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you don't have a ton of maneuverability anyway. Yeah. Dude is like carrying a whole bunch of weight and he's trying to avoid a race car from hitting him. It's like, it's not smart. You know, because I think Fox Sports does the drone. I'm just like, I just, just, just get the drone out there. I'd feel a lot better about a drone for a multitude of reasons. Like, A, it doesn't ruin the shot for the cameraman on pit road, and B, um, if that fucking thing does get hit, I'd rather just have a drone get hit. So, because if it gets hit, it's like, okay, that's it. <laughs> it's like, damn, that sucks. I guess we're getting a new one. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'll just go buy another one. Yeah, but ugh, I just that was yeah. No, Saturday was way too close for comfort. He got way too close on that one. I was like, Ooh. and not only that, but because... I think he walked out while the cars were still on track. Because when Lagano was doing his burnout, like uh. Ross Chastain, Kyle were still on the track. I think Chastain was doing his cooldown lap. Yeah, they were. Um, they were cars still finishing the race and doing their cooldown laps and stuff. And so like Logano did his burnout immediately. So like, that's not Logano's fault. Obviously, it's like he won the race. He's obviously obligated to do his burnout. But like, I feel like he did it really, really early. Like he came around the track really fast and did his burnout. And I didn't get any shots of his burnout. So if you actually, if you look at my posts on Instagram. 
um, for on the DVR Instagram. Oh, that's the thing. We, we made an Instagram page now. That exists. I forgot to plug that. I'll plug it at the end again. But um, on the Instagram post, there's no burnouts for Logano because I just didn't get any shots of it. And it's going to be the same thing when I do my weekend photo dump. I just I just don't have any shots of Logano's burnout because... It might have a couple, when he started, they're not that great because it's kind of yeah, like no, rushed. Okay. Yeah, I don't think anybody, because everybody in the photo room was complaining about that. Everybody was like, did they let us out late? Did they let us out late? And then some of the other photographers were like, no, he did it really early. It's like they were letting us across the track to get to the crescent as he was doing his burnout. And so the photos that some of us do have, it's just the wall in front of the car. And then the yeah. rest of it's just a celebration of him getting out of the car because everybody missed the burnout because we were all running across pit lane when he was doing his burnout. <laughs> Meanwhile, I ate crap and hit the floor. You did. You ate shit. Was that Sunday or was that, was that Saturday. Saturday? That was Saturday. You did eat shit. I'm like, <laughs> you fell over the gives wall. one flap. <laughs> you were so flabbergasted, he had to sit down. I had to sit down for a sec. <laughs> I, t- I tell you what. Come Daytona, if I end up on a put it out by Clint Boyer, um, I would have made it. You're like, Mom, I made it on TV. This is you eating shit over the pit wall. <laughs> Everybody's trying to get to the crescent. I made it. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine having Clint Boyer laugh at you, fucking loser. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being noticed by Clint Boyer, but in the wrong ways. <laughs> I've been noticed, but at what cost? At what cost? <laughs> at what cost? I've won, but at what cost? <laughs> but um, at the cost I feel like the Saturday Boyer's racing. Feeling. Yeah, my my photos from Saturday are amazing, but I feel like the racing <laughs> was kind of subpar. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that. I mean, Ty Gibbs pretty much dominated, though. It's just, like, nobody it could really... Write home about. ...could kind of pass it, honestly. It was kind of hard, too. Yeah. I feel like your only chance of beating Ty Gibbs was, like, maybe, like, a late race, like, great white checkered, and... Even that didn't work, because we <laughs> had a late race caution. Or just, like, you know, drive it in deep and hope for the best. <clears throat> yeah. Cause I mean, I mean, they tried yeah. everything. Cause I know they even did. Sam I like Mayer just had like, way too good of a car. Sam Mayer like uh, try helping out Noah Gregson towards the end. I think with two to go, he kind of just like held up Ty Gibbs for a little bit. Yeah, he just had way too good of a car. Like there was nothing anybody could have done. <clears throat> but I will say, all four championship cars did amazing. Cause I think I. Like the most of the race, all four championship cars were one, two, three, four for like a majority of the race. For Xfinity, and so it's it, yeah. So it's not for a lack of trying. It's just that Ty Gibbs just had the better car. Like there was nothing anybody could have done to beat him because they all were up there all race long. But there were obviously a couple of pit stops and things that happened that kind of shook it up a little bit. But at the end of the day, all four championship contenders. Every time I looked up at the pylon, were all like at least in the top five. Yeah. If not the top six. No. So it was like they were all up each other's ass the entire race. And so it was a close one, but they just couldn't do anything to catch him. It was just way too dominant. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty competitive. Um, I think Barry, for for a little bit, fell back a little bit, but it wasn't like you had one guy, like, fall off. You know what I mean? And I think he fell off because he had damage. Because I was looking at some of my photos from Saturday, and he had a donut on the side of his door. So I think he fell off because he had some damage. But even then, he was still up there in the fight. Yeah. But, um, yeah, a uh, pretty decent race. I mean, it wasn't, like, the greatest, but somewhat yeah, entertaining. Like I said, yeah, it's like I said, nothing to write home about. It wasn't a terrible race by any means, but it also wasn't anything to write home about. So Yeah. And, uh, oh God, the booze, though. Oh, my God. The booze. Even, here's the thing. I've been covering race since 2018, like I've said, and must like a broken record. Um, so that was a time where Joy Logano was at like peak, like peak hatred. Like everybody just hated Joy Logano with every fiber of their being. I, I I've never even seen booze that loud for Joy Logano at that point in the timeline. Like 2018, 2019, where Logano was booed off stage. The booze for Ty Gibbs at driver intros and when he won the championship, they were just thundering booze. Yeah, just I was expecting booze. like beer bottles or something flying on the onto the racetrack. <laughs> you know, that's what I thought too. He took the checkered flag, almost ran over the NBC cameraman. I was I was waiting for the beer cans to come flying over the fence. So. Yeah, I was just like, oh god, this is it. <laughs> yeah, 
Because I think we also said pre-race. Like, I think we were driving into the track and we were like, can you imagine what's going to happen? Like, we're going to have to cancel the cup race because they're going to burn down Phoenix Speedway if Ty Gibbs wins the championship. <laughs> it's going to happen. They're going to have to do it. Yeah, and then and then he won, and just the boos like, and they got they kept getting louder, like they were already booing when he was doing his burnout and stuff. And the second that window net came down and he climbed out of the car, they just got louder and louder and louder. It's like when I say thunderous boos, I mean that in the most literal way possible. They were thundering boos. Yeah, it was bad. Like it was just you can hear it throughout the whole whole racetrack. It's just it was insane. Yeah. God, and even during, and what's funny too is like during driver intros, it's like they announced Ty Gibbs, and it was a thundering boo. And immediately after Ty Gibbs, they introduced Noah Gregson, and it was like the exact opposite. It was like thundering cheers and screams. Th thundering, yeah, yeah. It was like thundering supplies, but then with Ty Gibbs, it was thunderous boos. It's like the contrast there was incredible. So I think it's really fitting that it came down to Gregson and Gibbs. Yeah, <clears throat> but I mean, he raced it with some respect though, because like. He, he did, I will say. He got, he was a lot better today. He didn't wreck anybody. He didn't run anybody off the track. He, I think he uh, he raced today with not today. He raced Saturday with his head on his shoulders. Yeah. No, he raced with a lot of respect. It was really nice to see. Uh, oh, excuse me. It was nice to see Noah Gregson kind of um, go up there and congratulate him, just to kind of you know show some respect. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember <laughs> the fucking I don't know I'm, I don't want to call anybody out I really don't but I think there was an interview where Noah Gregson called him a POS yeah yeah I called him a piece of shit but he didn't say piece of shit he called him a POS but and so when he went over and congratulated Ty Gibbs somebody in the media center made the joke was he went over there shook his hand and said congratulations piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what made me laugh so hard on Saturday I think that's I think that's the joke that got me yeah <laughs> it was just funny because I, I did see <laughs> no, him walk Greg over to his car I did too <laughs> congratulations you piece of shit <laughs> walked away <laughs> Uh, I don't doubt that's what happened. I don't think. Yeah, you know what? I, I was I was gonna say I don't think Noah would do that, but that's a hundred percent something Noah would do. So. Yeah, <clears throat> but like I don't know. Yeah, he showed a lot of respect, but I, I mean, he said it in his press conference like he doesn't like him. He thinks. Yeah. yeah no, he, he was just, very open about not liking him. He straight up told him like, you know, you're a douchebag. Like, I don't like you. Cause he, he said he used to like him. Like he said he was, he was good friends with him, and then also he said he just changed. He just just became like a, a very bitter person yeah well it's just unfortunate but i guess you know sometimes it happens yeah but i before we get into the cup race i guess what we're mentioning ty gibbs we, we can't go through the podcast without at least touching on it a little bit um i don't want to dwell on it too long just because i know it's a really difficult thing to even talk about and i'm not really good with this subject either like i've never been good with this kind of subject but I know we, we just kind of came at Ty Gibbs a little bit and kind of talked about just the booze and everything, just the experience he had the last couple of weeks. But I do also just want to uh, give out my most sincere condolences to the whole Gibbs family because I don't nobody was ready to wake up Sunday morning to find out that Co Coy Gibbs <coughs> had passed away. Yeah, that um, was heavy for everybody. That was very heavy, and I, I also want to say you know I want to send my condolences to them. Um, it's just very, very tragic to to what. What happened to that family i mean just for how everything went um you know the ty gives winning the championship and then for that to happen it's just a very very heartbreaking um yeah you know, i can't can't imagine what ty gibbs is going through uh what he's thinking about it's just um it's very very unfortunate very very sad to to see that happen um so but yeah my my condolences are with the family yeah, and the the people who attacked Ty Gibbs on Sunday morning, I just want to say, what in the world is wrong with you people? Because there there were people on Twitter that I saw that were just like coming after Ty Gibbs for it. I'm just like, dude, you may not like the driver. I don't care who you are. You can hate him with a, every fiber of your being, but to then come after somebody after they just lost their father is just a piece of shit move. Because it's like I'm not the biggest fan of Ty Gibbs. He has mildly annoyed me. Like, I've been vocal about it, too, on this podcast. But I would never 
wish something like that on like my greatest enemy and so it's like I'm not the biggest Ty Gibbs fan but I just waking up to something like that is just fucking horrendous and I can't even begin to fathom what that family is going through right now and so I just want to just make it known that my condolences are with the Gibbs family, and I'm wishing the best for them in this time. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just, it was very, you know, I mean, honestly, it was just a very sad, sad morning. Just because, just with everything, like, when I, when, <clears throat> I think when I saw that this in the morning, I think, I don't know if you told me or if I saw it on Twitter, but... Um, it just felt... I know I didn't tell you because none of my social things were loading. Oh. Sunday morning, I had just, like, no connection, so I didn't know. Everything I knew was what I was told through you. Yeah. I remember they said something happened. They said that, you know, Ty Gibbs is not racing, and they said they had a family emergency, so I was just like, oh, that's that's really weird. So then um, I remember uh, I, fr- uh, I remember going get, getting to the track, and I was looking on Twitter, and, and they said that people were just, like, you know, surrounding the the 23 uh garage and it said it, was, it just felt weird it, like the whole vibe just felt very very off um yeah because I, I think they knew but they didn't want to announce anything yet because I, I didn't go over there just because i didn't i already knew there was going to be like a million people over there so i just kind of wanted to give them space because we when we rolled up we didn't know what was happening all we knew at the time was that ty gibbs wasn't racing and they were very like vigorously trying to figure out who was going to race the car, even if they were going to race the car, what was going on. And so I was just, I knew it was a mess over there. I didn't want to contribute to the mess. And so I just elected to stay in the media center and just kind of get done what I needed to get done. But because at that point we were, I didn't want to speculate. Like I knew obviously something not great had happened because Ty Gibbs had left, but it didn't sink in and dawn on me how bad it was until driver intros and none of the Toyota drivers were there. Yeah. That, that's when I knew something really bad had happened. Yeah, that was that was very weird. Cause I, I yeah, I, we were we were there, and I was like, I didn't see Kyle, I didn't see Denny, I didn't see Bubba. They didn't do Hamrick. It's just, and, and they didn't do Truex either. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, none of them. <coughs> the, uh, the only one, well, only one that there. Uh, was there was Bell, but I mean, he had yeah, to be there. Uh, he kind of had to be for the championship thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel like I would have understood a build and go either, but I feel like they kind of prioritize <clears throat> the championship things too. So I, I understand why Bell was there, but I also would not have faulted him at all for if he elected to tap out on driver intros too. Yeah. But, but it was it was a very heavy morning on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, it was. But to 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 kind of segue out of that now to kind of scooch out from that. Um, the racing Sunday, I kind of feel the racing Sunday very similarly to how I felt about the racing was on Saturday, where it wasn't a terrible race by any means, but it was also nothing really to write home about. It was, Logano got up front, and there was just really nothing anybody could do about it. Yeah. Wasn't a whole Although lot of Although I passing. do think Blaney led the, yeah, I think Blaney led the most laps, though, didn't he? I think Blaney's the one who actually dominated that race. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he led the most laps, so... Yeah, it was one of those things where it's just they just wow. It it was difficult to pass because that's that's another trend that we saw all weekend was Sammy Smith won the pole, won the race. Zane Smith won the pole, won the race. Ty Gibbs won the pole, won the race, and then finally Sunday comes, Joey Logano wins the pole, wins the race. I think the only difference between the Logano victory and everybody else was that Logano didn't lead the most laps. That was the only thing that was different. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, you're getting tired. Yes, a little bit. <clears throat> Are giving up on me? <laughs> no. Okay, we're good. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, the racing in Phoenix. You know, n- nothing really to write home about, but they definitely were not terrible races by any stretch of the imagination. I feel like we had some good racing. It just wasn't like anything that blew our socks off. Yeah. I mean, still pretty good, but it wasn't like you know a martinsville or anything like that but oh my god yeah no the amount of people who thought somebody was gonna pull the wall right at phoenix and like i thought about that too actually i thought about that and i was like is somebody gonna try the wall right at phoenix and then i remembered that just the way phoenix is built i don't think that would work because the way you come off of three and four it's a lot straighter of a shot it's like the entry to turn three is really tight but it kind of straightens out 
And so I think wall riding wouldn't even give you an advantage just because of the way the exit of turn four is. And so I think doing a wall ride at Phoenix would just be idiotic. I mean, it's an idiotic move to begin with, but I feel like doing it at Phoenix where turn four is basically straight, <laughs> uh, it just I don't feel like that would work anyway. Yeah, it's just it's kind of a a weird shape. It's a weird track. Yeah. yeah. Like you said, Martinsville, it's a lot easier to do that because you're pretty much just it's drivers are going so slow into the turn, whereas you know you, if you just drive it straight in, you can just fly through that turn. But yeah, because yeah, because with Phoenix, in my very limited video game racing experience. Um, <laughs> yeah, with, with Martinsville, it's like they were saying, it's the slowest corner in all of NASCAR. It's like you're, you slow down for their corner and you're basically just rolling through the whole corner. You're not even really on the gas until you hit the exit of the turn. Like, you're even off the gas through the apex of it, just kind of rolling through the turn. With Phoenix, you're, you're slowing down, you're kind of rolling into three, but you can kind of gas it up at the apex of the corner, maybe even a little bit before if you roll it the right way, because turn four is basically a straight line off yeah and so it's like there's a lot less off throttle time whereas with martinsville you're essentially off throttle the entirety of the corner whereas martinsville you're pretty much only off throttle for like the entry of turn three before you can get away with getting back into the gas and so it just it just wouldn't a wall ride just would not make sense nor would it work also because of how wide that turn is it's a very wide turn as well yeah so you you would just be giving up a ton of time doing that You here? Yep. Oh, you're yawning again. Okay, I was like, whoop, that's a lot of dead air. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you got anything to write home about the championship other than the... Uh, I feel like we have covered some of the cup racing moment. stuff earlier, I mean, too. It was just kind of dumb, but to me it was funny. But, uh... Oh, no. It was, uh... So, I, I missed it. So, I think I wa We were both in, uh... No, I think you were in one in, you were in turn two i was in the entrance of three and i didn't notice that the caution came out until i saw elliot spun out i'm like oh shit he spun out and then uh i think ross uh, ross spun him because i guess he he came down on ross and i just <sighs> excuse me um yeah. Sorry. A little tired boy. <laughs> there you go. It's been a long day for both of yeah. us. We're, we're currently recording this. It's almost 9 o'clock right now, yeah. uh, our time. Yeah. When we're recording this. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. When that happened, he, I was in. I, mean, he, I was on the exit at 2. He didn't. That happened. He didn't. Like, he's not. I mean, I don't blame him for not lifting, but, you know, it's just. You're racing for a championship, and it's just like, you know, he you try cutting him down, and, you know, Ross is not going to, you know, let off for Elliot. But, uh. Um, no. Tor he doesn't I, lift for anybody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's not gonna lift for you. I mean, if you're—I mean, I get it, but he's not gonna lift because he's battling for a championship. He's trying to win it. Um, but what was funny is that, like, I think at the end we were taking pictures of Logano at the championship celebration, and uh, I think a Chase Elliott <laughs> oh, fan came yeah. up and he like he looked at looked at us and he says like, "Does everybody here agree that Ch Ross Chastain doesn't belong in NASCAR? He belongs in a Devolution Derby." Yeah, he, he was so upset. I'm like, I was like, dude, go home. Uh, he, yeah, just walking by, just he, he, like, because I saw him walking by and he was mumbling something. And so I looked down and he looked up at us. And yeah, like, he just just going by. It's like Ross Chastain doesn't belong in NASCAR. Ross Chastain shouldn't be in NASCAR. He belongs in demolishing derbies. I'm just like, bro, calm down. Like, <laughs> it ain't that serious. I mean, it is that <laughs> go, serious. Go to the snack bar right and get like, a beer. Yeah, go get a beer. Go to the rolling beer. Actually, no, I don't think he needs a beer. He was already upset enough. Oh. <laughs> I don't know what kind of drunk he is, but... I don't know what kind of drunk he is. So maybe putting alcohol in him would be a mistake. And so maybe let's not put beer in him. But uh, he was... Yeah, he was just walking around. And he mumbled all the way down the camera thing. Yeah. Like, even when even when he walked far enough that I couldn't hear him, I saw him still, like, looking like he was mumbling. I'm just like, um, I get you're upset. I'd be upset, too. But it's like, mmm... You, if you look at the replay, Chase Elliott did come down on him. It's like, but take the L. Yeah, just take the L. The amount of L's I've had to take as a Kyle Busch fan, you can take a Chase Elliott L. Nah, it's too much for them. It's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, mm, I'm going to keep this one to myself, actually. Never mind. Yeah. But, um, 
My favorite thing, though, one of my favorite things that also happened on Sunday pre-race during the red carpet walk, um, somebody <laughs> asked Bob Pockrass to sign oh. his arm, and Bob <laughs> Pockrass, the man of the people, went over and signed his arm. And I was like, look at Bob go. A true man of the people. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny, too. Yeah. Because that kid had a lot of signatures up and down his arms. I don't know. I don't. I didn't look at his arm. I don't know who signed his arm, but I just thought it was funny that he was like, Bob, can you sign my arm? And Bob was like, sure. <laughs> just walked over and signed his arm. I was like, awesome. <laughs> and then went go. about his day. <laughs> yep. Just went about his day after that. <laughs> oh, that's funny. God. It was it was a chaotic but really fun weekend, honestly, doing the championship races in Phoenix. Yeah, it was. I enjoyed it. Um, it was I kind of I can't again. wait. I, I mean, I'm kind of excited for for the opener at the LA Clash. I kind of hope I get to work that one, but uh, we'll see. Oh, yeah, we're going to see if we can do that. We're going to try and do LA this year, next year. The LA Clash. I would love to do LA. That would be a really cool one. I The only thing I have against it is that I just hate LA. <laughs> I just hate LA with a burning passion. That's the only thing That's the only thing I'm on the fence well, about. Well, now you have a love, love like, hate with uh, LA and NASCAR. Well, I don't have a love hate with NASCAR. I love NASCAR. My thing is just LA. I'm just I'm saying because they're, they're I, I hate LA. LA. That's true. It's just a debacle that I'm having. It's like I get to go to cover NASCAR, but I also just traffic in LA. Just a- LA in general just sucks ass. Uh, I'm just like I hate it there. I know. I just hate it. There. Like the traffic, the pricing. It's like every everything in LA sucks. So I'm just like, mm, is it worth it? Is it worth going a billion dollars in the hole just to cover a NASCAR race? Well, then again, it's like we don't have to worry about tickets. We don't have to worry about food. We don't have to worry about. Um, That's true, parking. but everything else. Uh, I don't know. I'll see. I'll. I'll. I might suck it up, but I just. I've never had. Every time I've gone to LA, I've had a terrible time, and so I just don't want to go to LA. Yeah. I've. I've never had a good time in LA. Yeah. Like the thing that I'm there for, I've had a good time at, but just LA in general, just to be in LA, I've never had a good time. Because it's like going to LA for Disneyland. Uh, Anaheim, great. Uh, I went to LA for a concert. The concert was great, but just like LA in general, I just hate it. I've never had a good time. It's awful. I just no. <laughs> so no, no, <laughs> just no. Sorry, LA. Sorry if you live in LA, but your your city sucks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry to tell you this, LA, but your town sucks. Yeah, sorry, LA. Not sorry. Um, <laughs> the only reason I'll step foot in LA is to go to Disneyland. Like, I even told my buddy Sterling, after the L.A. concert, I was like, I'm not coming back here for a concert. I just, it's not worth it. I'll, I'll go to anywhere else but L.A. for a concert. I'll just wait for them to go to Salt Lake or something. And so, the only reason I'll go to L.A. is for Disneyland or for NASCAR. That's, that's the only reasons you'll ever see me in L.A. ever again. I'm like, what are you doing here at NASCAR? Yeah. I was like, oh, Michael's here. He must be either going to Disneyland or covering NASCAR. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm going to Disneyland. We're going to Disneyland. Fucking <laughs> 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 Jeff Gordon. We're going yeah. To We're, going to Dis- We're going to Disneyland. But, <laughs> but, but yeah, I can't wait for next season. See, see what other opportunities come rolling our way. Yeah. Um, if LA happens to be one of them, I'll suck it up and I'll go to LA for NASCAR. But that, that's it. <laughs> That'll be my one stop. <laughs> And Auto Club, I guess, and the Auto Club. So the LA Clash and the Auto Club are the only two races I will be in LA for. Other than that, I will. Sorry, goodbye LA. <laughs> goodbye LA. <laughs> goodbye LA. But um, but yeah, I know we're guaranteed Vegas at least. Um, if nothing else, um, so we're guaranteed at least to do Vegas twice a year. But I really want to see how many other races we can we can stick our grubby hands in next year. Oh yeah. I'm already thinking of yeah. uh, some certain races, but uh, yeah, I can't wait. It's gonna be a good, uh, good year. So yeah, if you're down for the drive from Fayetteville to Charlotte, I don't know how far that is. I think it's like a two-hour drive, one-hour drive, something like that. Fayetteville. Um, I know. A, yeah, one of my friends lives in Fayetteville, North Carolina now, so it's realistic that we could do the Coke 600 if you're down oh. for like a two-hour drive from his place to the Speedway. The Speedway. This, do this be we I gotta I don't know off the top of my head how far that drive is but I'll have to talk to him see if we can get that worked out but we'll go from there we'll figure it out yeah. um anything else you want to talk about uh nope that is it for me all right so I guess before we wrap up here what did you think about the overall season 
I thought it was good. Season. Very, very uh, unbiased. I mean, there was a lot of different winners. You didn't have oh, yeah. one. You didn't have anybody that dominated. Um, I, I thought this year was pretty good. I mean, as far as like competitive wise, because you had a different variety of drivers, not just like you know the same three or four drivers that win every year. Um, so it was pretty neat. I mean, I'm I'm kind of glad that uh, you know this year was kind of a little bit more different. Um, and of course, yeah. we had a new car, some new new features to it. Um, you have new drivers, you know, everybody's like trying to get used to the car. So, um, I thought this year was pretty good. Um, definitely what NASCAR wanted as far as like a, a different variety of like drivers kind of make it fair for everybody to, to make it more competitive. Um, just to give everybody a fair chance. So, um, yeah, I thought this year was pretty good. Yeah. Fucking phenomenal season. In my book, honestly, it's like the the racing was great, except for the short the short tracks were something left to be desired. But like overall, just like, I guess the overall of the season, we had phenomenal racing, really good diversity and everything. So it's like I I guess I really can't say anything that you haven't already said. But um, I feel like twenty twenty two was a really good season. Honestly, if NASCAR just makes a couple of changes to the car, which they've already said they're planning on doing. 2023 could be an even better season because we're still learning the car and i feel like once more teams figure out the car we're probably going to have even more winners yeah and like the thing more people getting up there the thing that i really loved about this year was just the mile and a half package it's just oh really God, great yes. to see how how much that's progressed because i mean compared to the slot car days it was horrendous thank god like I, at a point where i was just like if this continues like i feel like we're gonna start losing mile and a half tracks yeah, but I think the only terrible mile and a half track this year was fucking Texas and the All Star Race. That was, yeah, wolf. that's always that been a bad. One, yeah, it's been bad since the reconfiguration, but I feel like it was exceptionally bad this year for some reason. It was just horrendous. It was a horrendous race, but we're not we we're not gonna talk about that. We're just gonna let that one slide. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So next year is going to be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to whatever gets flung at us for next year. Yeah. So, um, well, this is it. Last one. This is it. Last one. All right. So before we sign off, I have to do my little plugs. Um, so even though the racing season is over, we aren't going to deactivate for the off season. We, we there might be little bits of content here and there get uploaded while it will be less often we are still going to be a little bit active and so make sure to follow us on twitter at donahue underscore vargas we also just made an instagram so make sure to go hit us up on instagram with the same tag at donahue underscore vargas also make sure to check out the website i'm going to be updating that in the next couple of days over the off season and we are on the, the web at www.donahuevargasracing.com and on top of that, also before we wrap up, I just want to give a huge thank you to everybody who's helped us get to the racetrack, help us get started up and get our names out there. So I just want to give a huge shout out to, I have my little list here um, in order of appearance. <laughs> um, huge shout out to Vern at KPVM TV for letting us cover the Vegas races and getting us down there every year. I've been working for KPVM TV and Vern since 2018 covering the Vegas races. Also, just want to give a huge shout out to Stan Mullis, Matt Jaskell, and Mike Young for letting us cover those Vegas events and helping us out through the season. And then for the mid part of the season where things really got to ramp up, I also just want to give a huge shout out to Kay uh, Taylor Kitchen at Above the Yellow Line for reaching out to us, Austin Terrio and Ast Austin Terrio Racing LLC for giving us an opportunity. Um, Howie DeCivino the third for letting us shoot his races. Just awesome people had a great time doing that. And finally, a big shout out to the podium finish for letting us cover the Phoenix Championship races. And so now with that, once again, a huge thank you to everybody who helped us get to the track and make this content possible. And now I want to give a final shout out to my good buddy Christopher Vargas Aww. right here uh, for being an amazing photo partner all year and dealing with my stupid bullshit <laughs> <laughs> and for also putting together this nice, lovely little recap video that we're about to show.
And with that, the 2022 season comes to an end. Good night.